Hi everyone, welcome to another week of our stats lectures and today we're talking about chi-square tests. Now today is kind of the last big new topic that we'll be talking about for the semester, so congratulations on getting to almost the end. Um, after today's lecture, the next few weeks will just be some applications and some summaries and some more examples and sort of putting everything together. But these two chi-square tests that we're talking about today are the, is the last of the new topics, the new kinds of tests that we're talking about. So very exciting. All right, so what we're talking about today, as I said, are chi-square tests. And chi-square tests, as you'll learn in a second, are all about categorical data. So understanding categorical data, understanding how to summarize, communicate categorical data, and how to perform statistical tests to answer hypotheses um, on categorical data. So we'll be talking a bit about that and how to think about expressing the data. And then we'll be talking about the chi-square test statistic itself and then two different kinds of chi-square tests. There's the goodness of fit test first, which is the single variable test, and then the test of independence, which is the test of association. All right, chi-square. So, so far throughout the semester, we've really been focusing almost solely on numeric variables. So those variables that are some kind of numeric scale or have some kind of numeric property about them. And we've done a number of different kinds of tests to address different sorts of hypotheses, all about these numeric variables. So we started off looking at what an average score would be on a numeric variable and comparing that average score to some external known population score. Then we walked across to looking at the average score between two independent groups, two separate groups, and the average score between two related groups. And then finally last week we were looking at a linear association between two numeric variables. So all of those kinds of tests have been looking at numeric variables. And as I said before, what we're talking about today will require a little bit of a shift in thinking because we're focusing solely on categorical variables, categorical data. So we're not going to be talking about mean scores, average scores, any kind of measure of central tendency or those kinds of measures of variability, like in terms of the standard deviation, the standard error, those kinds of things that we've talked about previously. We're not doing any of those things. Instead, what we're talking about are numbers of observations in each group of a categorical variable. And we'll also talk, as well as numbers, which can also be expressed as frequencies, um, we'll talk about proportions or percentages. So we're thinking about how many people, let's say, we have in each of our groups um, and what proportion of our overall sample is in each of those groups, what percentage of our overall sample falls in each of those groups. So we really need to start thinking about numbers of people in categories as opposed to average scores or mean scores. So categorical variables. Remember that categorical variables can come in two different types, two different kinds of categorical variables. We can have nominal variables and ordinal variables. Remember that nominal variables are unordered categories, just arbitrary categories of things like gender, like color, like degree, like department, anything like that. Whereas ordinal variables are where you've still got a categorical variable, you've still got groups and categories and types, but there is an order or a hierarchy to them. So say if you've got low, medium, high, or university um, undergraduate degrees versus postgraduate degrees, those are examples of ordinal variables. Categorical variables can have a minimum of two categories. So you have to have at least two categories, but it can be up to an infinite number of categories. There's no maximum number of categories you can have for categorical variables. And in particular, two category variables are called something special. They're called dichotomous variables or binary variables. And the chi-square tests that we're talking about today, which are specifically Pearson's chi-square tests that will come in two different forms, they can be used for any of these kinds of categorical variables. So they can be used for nominal or ordinal. They can be used for variables with only two categories or variables with three categories or variables with four or five or six, etc. categories. There's no limit to the kind of categorical variables that they apply to. It's anything that's categorical. The um, actual chi test itself, chi-square test, it's represented by this Greek symbol that you can see there. It's kind of like a wonky X or an italicized X. That's the actual Greek chi symbol. And as you can see, it's spelt C-H-I, but it is pronounced chi, um, just to get that pronunciation in your heads. Okay, and as I said before, when we're thinking about categorical variables, it's kind of a different way that we're conceptualizing what we're actually talking about compared to numeric variables. 
So as I said on the previous slide, rather than thinking about a score on a particular scale or a particular number in a sea of numbers, what we have in terms of each of our observations, which for the most part are usually people, is that each person, each observation has a particular category membership. So they fall into one of a number of different categories, one of two categories, one of three categories, one of four categories. And they're mutually exclusive categories, which means that each person falls into only one of those categories. So if we're thinking about your favorite color, you're only going to have one favorite color. If we're thinking about what department at the university you're studying in, there'll only be one individual department. So people can't fall across multiple categories. They have to be mutually exclusive categories, fall into only one category. And what we're really thinking about understanding in terms of categorical variables and this is sort of the next step beyond some of the things we're talking about today is trying to understand whether we can predict the likelihood or the chance of falling into a particular category or predicting the likelihood or the chance of a particular outcome occurring or not occurring. And that will make more sense in the second half of today's lecture when we start looking at associations between categorical variables. Okay, so next on to thinking about expressing categorical data. So we've talked a bit about this in the past, particularly when we had our summarizing data lecture back in the first bit of semester. So if we're thinking about expressing categorical data, there's kind of three different ways that we can do it in terms of using a number to express the numbers of observations um, that fall into each of the categories. So the first one that we have already talked about is a frequency. And a frequency is just a count, a raw count, the number of observations that fall into that particular category. So if I have two groups of students, if I have students who have versus haven't done PSYC 104 before they did PSYC 105, um, the frequency would just be the number of people who have done 104 versus the number of people who haven't done 104. So frequency is just a count, it's just a raw count. The next way that we can express categorical data would be in terms of a proportion. And a proportion is a number that ranges from zero to one. And it's calculated as the number of observations that fall into that particular category divided by the total number of observations. And proportions can be similarly expressed if we times our proportion by 100 as a percentage. So percentages range from zero to 100% and it's just the proportion except expressed out of 100 rather than out of one. So to give you an example of those three different ways of expressing the same kind of thing, let's say that we've got 50 students and let's say that we ask each of these 50 students whether this is their first session of study at Macquarie University. So whether they're new to Macquarie University this session versus whether they have studied at Macquarie University before this session. So if we were to express this in terms of a frequency, then what, that would just be the number of people who answer yes versus no. So you can see here we've got four people, four of our 50, who are new to Macquarie this session for whom this is their first session of study. And we've got 46 people who say no to that question. So 46 people for whom this is not their first session of study. So that would be the frequency. If we were to express the proportion, that would just be the frequency in each of those categories divided by the total number of observations, which here is 50. So our proportion you can see of people who answered yes is 0.08, whereas the proportion of people who answer no is 0.92. So proportion ranges from zero to one. The closer to zero it is, the smaller the proportion. The closer to one it is, the bigger the proportion. And you can see that we've done the same thing except expressed each of those proportions as a percentage. So percentage is the proportion times by 100. So we have 8% of our sample said yes, whereas 92% of our sample said no. And to give you another example of doing the same thing, let's say we've got our same 50 people and we ask them what their gender is. And you can see that 30 of our people in our sample said they identify as female gender, 18 said they identify as male gender, and two said they identify as other gender. So we can say that the proportion of females is 0.6 or 60%. We can say that the proportion of males is 0.36 or 36%. And the proportion of other gender is 0.04 or 4%. So it's the same data that we're expressing just in three different kinds of ways. The raw frequency, the proportion, which ranges from zero to one, and the percentage, which ranges from zero to 100.